Hey, welcome back to another exciting episode of the Snecker Show. Uh, I'm going in for shoulder surgery in the morning and it's freaking me out, man, because I'm going to be kind of useless for a little while and I'm not used to that. So I'm out here in the garage trying to get everything done like I've been doing for the last couple weeks, finish everything that I'm going to need to do that involves my shoulder, which turns out is pretty much everything because it's my right shoulder. I use that one all the time. Uh, anyway, I got a bunch of wood here stacked up that I've been cutting on the bandsaw. This is, has been built up over time, but this is all plum wood. Uh, I'm going to show a jig today. I just want to go over a jig that I made a while ago for, uh, for cutting up some of these little plum logs that I picked up uh, after a pretty heavy wind and, and hailstorm. So I got a jig here that is the, the key to success with this. It's very simple. I have a metal track on mine just because I had one sitting around that you can use a piece of wood just as easily. All it is is a piece of plywood and something to ride through your miter slot on the bandsaw. The, uh, to make this thing, you put your, uh, your strip on the bottom for the guide as wide as your miter slot is. The, um, the piece of plywood doesn't need to be any specific width because you're going to cut it off anyway. Uh, you make it too wide this way and then you push it through your saw and it'll cut it off to a nice zero clearance edge. I put a 90 degree fence on here because I can actually do pretty accurate 90 degree cuts that way if I want to, but it's not really necessary. Um, and then there's nothing really uh, too tricky about actually cutting the board. Since I have so much of this stuff, got to watch that shoulder, all I do is lay it on there until it seems kind of flat. If it doesn't, if it feels like it's going to roll too much, I'll, I'll move it around and go other ways until it gets somewhere where I can hold it on there with some degree of stability, and I'll pull it back and slide it over just a little bit, make my first cut, and then I can ride it along the fence. All right, let's watch it in action. Nope, I almost forgot one thing. If, um, find a piece of plywood, you also have the option of taking a small, this is not small, it's too big, but uh, if you want to cut at a certain angle, like if you like the grain a certain way, you know you're gonna get a nice, uh, a better cut if you rotate the log a little bit. Uh, you can just take a small piece of plywood and and tack it onto the back. Uh, and that small, I mean like that big. Just something to help this side lay flat on the jig so that you can push it through if that makes sense. So this, this one would even work. I would just pull this off, figure out which way I want it to stay, set that down, put one tiny little tack or a screw through there and that way it wouldn't rotate.
right there you have it. Now, uh, now I have another stack of plum wood that I can put some spacers in between, uh, stack it up, get some clamps on it. As you can see, since plum wood tends to go nuts, everything that I have put together, I have wrapped up. Now it's coming loose because the wood is shrinking, but I have it wrapped up with spacers in between it and some rope around it to hold everything in place or some some clamps to make sure that it really doesn't move for the potentially more valuable pieces. Some beautiful wood, fun to work with, um, but it does go nuts as it drying. Anyway, that's it. That's how the jig works. And uh, again, it's very simple to build and it will get you a huge stack of wood in your garage for you to play with at a later date. Have fun. Good luck. See you soon, hopefully.